In this episode of Gear of the Month, we have come to DI boxes or direct boxes. What are they? What do they do? Why should you use them? What different types are there? And where could you use them? Hi, my name is Roger and welcome. Let's get the technical stuff out of the way first. DI stands for direct inject or direct input. And we use it mainly for two reasons. One is to take a high impedance signal and transform it to a low impedance signal. The other is that we also transform an unbalanced signal into a balanced signal. Let's say that we plug in an old passive electric bass into a DI box. That electric bass have high impedance and also only signal and ground. This box transform it to low impedance, two signals, plus and minus, and also ground. The benefits are that a mic preamp will behave much better if it receives a low impedance signal, like from a microphone, and will probably sound better. A balanced signal can also travel much longer distance than an unbalanced signal can. Therefore, we often use DI boxes on stage from keyboards, electric basses, acoustic guitars and so on, so that the signal can travel from the stage all the way to the mixing console front of house. A common feature on nearly every DI box is a ground lift. You switch it and you can get rid of hum and noises sometimes. Another feature that is on nearly every DI box is a through or link. You plug in your electric bass and then you go through or via the link to your bass amplifier and the XLR connection goes to the PA system. Your sound card probably already have a DI box built in and it's probably called High z which stands for High Impedance. You connect your High Impedance instrument to that connector. If you don't have a connector, you probably have a switch. You can press. Of course, there's a lot of variety in DI boxes and they also come in different price ranges and they also sound differently from each other sometimes. The main categories though are active or passive DI boxes. Active needs power to work, often 48 volts phantom power from the mixing console. They can also use external power or batteries. Active DI boxes seems to be a little bit more expensive than passive. Are they better? Sometimes. One famous manufacturer of DI boxes says on their webpage that the rule of thumb is if you have an active instrument you should use a passive DI box and vice versa. I don't really agree with that. I agree with that if you have a really hot instrument like a synthesizer, you're probably better off with a passive DI box than an active. But in my experience, the active DI box have a little bit more treble than a passive DI box. If you like that or not, it's up to you. Also, of course, there are mono DI boxes for single instrument or stereo DI boxes for stereo instruments. If you're gonna buy a stereo DI box, I recommend you to spend a little bit more money because otherwise you will hear your left signal in your right. And there are other types of DI boxes, boxes with tubes in them, or like this one, which has a built-in rather advanced keyboard mixer, but it is actually just an advanced DI box. Or like this one, which is a DI box, but opposite. You plug in a low impedance balanced signal and you get a high impedance unbalanced signal. And this is used for reamping. You take signal from your recording and you can plug it into a guitar amplifier that is used to see an unbalanced high impedance signal. So where do we need to use a DI box? Live on stage is obvious. All instruments with a high impedance. This cable, we need to use a DI box. In the studio, you can use your high Z, high Z input on your sound card if the signal have to travel a longer distance. From another room, for example, we can use a DI box. Also for reamping, it's good to take that low impedance signal, which is very hot, into a signal that a guitar amplifier is used to. 
If you don't use the iBoxes for audio, you can always use them as book support, or pot holders, dumbbells for children maybe, or cats. Stack a couple of them together and have as an iPad support. And of course, if your cable is too short, use the through link function to extend your cable. Sometimes we call cable sludd in Swedish. Sludd. Thank you for watching. Until next time, Roger there.